what's going on everyone and welcome to part 4 of tutorial series on api gateway authorization in the previous tutorial i have taken you through on how to create app client and how to set it up and now in this tutorial i will take you through on how we can fetch access token refresh token and id token using hosted ui with authorization grant and implicit grant so let's get started assuming that you already have logged in into aws management console and once you are there navigate to cognito now within cognito click on manage user pools and select the user pool that we have created in part 2 of this tutorial series that is api auth now once you are there click on app client settings and you can see that these are the settings that we have configured in the previous tutorial so once you are here click on launch hosted ui right so just make sure that authorization code grant is selected and within allowed oauth scopes uh, open id is selected right and say launch hosted ui now if you look at the url then uh, if you look at this that is api auth.auth.us is hyphen one dot amazon cognitor.com right so what is this exactly so this is the domain name right so if you can see here api auth.auth.us is one dot amazon cognitor.com so this is the domain that we have created earlier right now let's look further within the url now it says slash login okay so here we have the login screen followed by client id so this is our client id from app client that we have created in the previous tutorial we can have a look so you can see here 3 h s a u right so starting with so here 3 h s a u and that's our client id then what we have response type as code so code represent that it will return authorization code and in case if i change code to token then it should return me the access token so right now let's keep it as it is but within authorization code grant we cannot change response type to token because it's not going to return the access token we will have a look right and then it is followed by scope that is open id so if we look at uh, app client settings then we have only selected scope as open id so here the scope is open id and then we have redirect uri that is uh, google.com that is again we had mentioned over here within callback url that is google.com right and i think that's it now uh, we have to log in with the username and password that we have created earlier so i had a username as srcecde and password at the rate one now it will ask me to enter new password so i will say right so right so change the password say send and it will redirect you to google.com right so as i explained in the previous tutorial that callback url is something uh, that after you log in where it should redirect you right so now i have logged in and it redirected me to google.com with authorization code so if we look in the url it says google.com slash code equal to and we have a code over here so this is the authorization code now how we can fetch access token using authorization code so for that we will go to postman right over here select post method now here we need to enter a url so that is the same domain name or the domain url so go to domain name i will copy this that is https api auth API auth dot
okay so uh, this is the domain name uh, which is followed by o auth to slash token so this is the endpoint that we are going to hit to access the id token access token and refresh token right now uh, within body select x www form url encoded and here we are going to pass few parameters so the first is grant type now grant type will be the authorization code that is authorization underscore code so grant type can be a refresh token authorization code or it can also be a client credentials based on uh, what uh, you are trying to achieve right so in our case grant type is going to be authorization code then uh, we have to pass client id that is client underscore id so we will copy and paste so go to app settings copy this id and within value paste it now the third parameter is redirect uri underscore uri that is going to be http let me copy and paste from here it should be exit right uh, else uh, it will throw an error then finally we need to pass the authorization code that we have received over here over here so i will copy this code and paste it here now if everything is correct then it should return me the id token access token and refresh token so let's check so as you can see within response we have id token access token and refresh token right so the id token ideally contain all user attributes which is readable by the client right so one thing you need to note here is that id token is only provided if the open id scope was requested right so uh, while we launch the ui uh, i shown you that uh, the op the scope is open id right so that's where uh, we are receiving the id token then access token we will use to access the resources and with refresh token you can fetch a new access token or id token without having to re-authenticate the user so this is how you can fetch the uh, various tokens uh, using authorization code grant right so if i look at the diagram that i have showed you in the previous tutorial right so what we did we launched the hosted ui we entered username and password and then it returned us the authorization code and then we used authorization code to fetch the access tokens or id tokens right so this is how the authorization code grant works now coming to the implicit grant right uh, so select implicit grant and check uh, authorization code grant and say save changes now click on launch hosted ui and we will have a look at the url once again now it's saying that sign in as an existing user so we are going to sign in with the existing user now if we look at the url it says client id uh, that's good then we have response type as token right so earlier it was code within uh, authorization code grant right because uh, since implicit grant does not deal with the authorization code if we look at the uh, flow right so what happens is we launch the hosted ui we enter username and password and it will directly return us the token so there is no uh, another step for fetching the authorization code within implicit grant so that's the reason the response type is token then we have scope equal to open id so since we have the scope as open id it will also return id token along with the access token right and then uh, finally we have redirect uri that is uh, google.com so let's see uh, what does it uh, return so i will say sign in as this user and as you can see uh, we have id token so i will paste it over here so i will simply search here uh, saying id underscore token 
right? Since we had mentioned scope as open ID, that's the reason it has written as the ID token. And we will also have the access token over here. So as you can see, we also have the access token here, right? So that's how implicit grant work. Now in case, uh, now let me uh, relaunch the hosted UI again. Now if I change or let me remove this scope. Uh, so I removed the scope. Now what will happen is if we are not passing any scope, then the authentication server uses all the scopes associated with the client, right? So in our case, the scope we have selected is open ID. So in our case, the scope we have selected is open ID, right? So in case if I remove the scope, it's going to by default presume that scope is open ID, right? And it will return me the ID token as well as access token. So let's have a look. So as you can see, we have the ID token and it is followed by the access token somewhere, right? So here it is, right? Now, uh, let me uncheck this uh, open ID and select the custom scope. So maybe I will select json.write and say save changes. Now let's relaunch the hosted UI. Now if you look at the URL, it says client ID response type as token. Now the scope has been changed to custom auth scope that is API auth slash JSON dot write and the redirect URI. Now this will only return the access token. Now it will not return the ID token. So let's have a look. So as you can see, now we only have the access token and no ID token. So let me paste it over here and search for id underscore token so it's not there so the id underscore token is only written when open id is selected within allowed oauth scopes right now as you can see within implicit grant there is no extra step of uh, fetching the authorization code so let's get back to authorization code grant once again and uncheck implicit grant and also select open ID and say save changes. We can also select uh, default scopes as well as uh, custom auth scopes, right? Uh, but uh, we will do that later. So once you are done with the settings, go back to Postman, right? And just say send, don't change anything and say send. Now it will throw an error. So it's saying invalid grant. It's because the authorization code can be used once. Right. If you try to reuse it again, it will return this error saying invalid grant. Now, in case if I am not passing redirect URI, let's see what does it return. It says invalid request, right? So you need to pass these parameters in case if I uncheck client ID and say send, it says invalid client, right? So now again, in order to fetch the tokens, you need to fetch the authorization code again and then uh, paste it over here. So let's do that. Launch the hosted UI. Say sign in as user. Copy this code. Replace this authorization code with the new one and say send. Now as you can see, uh, we have all the tokens here. Now here again, we have ID token. It's because uh, we have selected open ID as OAuth scopes uh, within user pool, right? So now in case uh, if we want to only fetch access token and refresh token and we don't need a ID token, then what we can do is uh, we can select any custom scopes and say save changes and say launch hosted UI. Now within scope, uh, there is open ID plus API auth slash json dot write. So what we can do is uh, just remove this scope and say enter, say sign in as user, copy this code, go back to postman, replace this authorization code and say send. Now it will only return access token and refresh token. And now we don't have uh, the ID token, right? So 
that's how uh, we can fetch uh, certain tokens using uh, authorization code grant and implicit grant so well that's it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we will start with configuring authorizers within api gateway until that time if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time